housing supply to slow. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're going to look at a media release from the HIA. This one is discussing the supply of new housing set to slow further. Now this is something that, well, we've been discussing on the channel for some time. I'd argue the construction apocalypse is going to be part of the reason why our capacity to meet future housing demand in construction won't be there. Won't be there. And we have this continued population growth, partly due to migration, which is well, one and a half million people in five years, a significant number of people that we need to house, either in rental accommodation or permanent accommodation. And it's going to take a lot of effort to build those homes. Now, if supply isn't there, if our capacity to build isn't there, we all know, well, it's another pillar of the housing prices that we so, so dearly love here in Australia. So let's check out this, uh, this media release. Despite record levels of migration, the number of new homes commencing construction is set to slow for at least the next 12 months, said the HIA chief economist, Tim Ridden. HIA released its Economic and Industry Outlook report today. The report includes updated forecasts for new home building and renovation activity nationally and for each of the eight states and territories. There's been a rapid slowdown in the volume of new building projects entering the pipeline, especially new apartments over the past year, added Mr. Reardon. We need the apartments, guys. We need that. That's... It's like a step, for some people, it's a stepping stone. You know, inner city living, you live in the apartment, then you, you become a, a boomer like me and move out to the suburbs and just pump out a million kids. And then you downsize and move back to another little apartment. Or you're an international coming over here studying, you, you know, share an apartment in the city. It's all part of life. And we, we need this stuff. This is why the nin, not in my backyard crowd really just frustrates me. The same ones who will bitch and moan about affordability, but don't realize they're part of the problem. And I don't think it's going to change, guys. It's not going to change in Australia. The sharp increase in the cash rate has compounded the barriers created by extraordinary restrictions on lending and investing, increased construction costs and regulatory costs. Oh, yeah, and we've got NCC National Construction Code changes rolling out again. This year, the new livability standards, which sound good. Sound good. It's great sound bite. Makes people happy. I mean, for someone who's got kids, being able to push a pram right into a house is fantastic. I've had elderly parents who have had wheelchairs and we had to get it in the house. That would make it a lot easier. Great. Awesome. I, as an architect, I love the idea. But we also have to understand this adds to the cost of new builds. It's going to make every new house more expensive. Every single one. Okay, so you got you got to understand they implement things like this, when you lobby for things like this, you're going to make housing that little bit more out of reach for the next generation. And you compound all the shit that's happened, guys, over the last few decades. It's, it's frustrating. It's quite frustrating. The rise in the cash rate is the key reason for the slowdown in the number of new homes commencing construction. There are long lags in this cycle and the full impact of the increases to date will not be apparent until late 2024 2024 when we weren't expected to when we, we weren't meant to have any cash rate increases until then are we are we gonna learn the lessons from all of this is the reserve bank gonna learn the lessons from you know, how how they, they went ham during the lockdowns i don't <laughs> I'm I'm just getting too cynical now, and too bitter. And I'm out of coffee. And I still got one more video to record. That that's the tough life of a YouTuber. Lending indicators of home building activity have fallen to exceptionally low levels. New home sales are almost fifty percent lower than a year ago. Lending for the purchase or construction of a new home has fallen to its lowest level since two thousand and eight. The slowdown in the commencement of new homes is counter to the goal of increasing supply and delivering 1 million homes over the next five years. Yeah, it's not going to happen. We're not going to get 1 million new homes in the next five years. Okay? Labor just gave the pitch. 
It's never going to happen. This new super duper fund they want to have, you know, the minimum they're going to provide that they've guaranteed, they've guaranteed is about 20 houses per month per state. That's bugger all, guys. It's nothing. Okay. And the revenue they're going to get, that they're going to invest in these housings, is what, 80 grand a house? I don't know. I, I don't I don't understand. I mean you might as well just do home builder then. Give people fifteen grand, the private market will build houses, and uh then they'll you'll get the fifteen grand back in GST. Use that to stimulate the construction sector. It's gonna overheat it to no to no end. It's it's just gonna make it all housing <laughs> more expensive. You're gonna have builders falling over left, right and center, but it's the Australian way. Beyond the rise in the cash rate, the supply of new homes is also constrained by a range of regulatory and, and cyclical challenges. The government's Housing Australia Future Fund isn't a solution to all of these problems, but is a necessary step towards improving the supply of new homes. Removing barriers to investment, reforming local council planning processes, yes, and stable economic settings are also necessary steps, concluded Mr. Reardon. Yes, the... The responsibility of local councils in getting us in this mess that we're at now, where people are sleeping in tents and in cars, it shouldn't be minimized. We, we need to hold councils to account. So, and here we go. So we've got, let me get rid of that little Grammarly thing. We've got multi-units actual, detached houses actual, solid, and this is the projected so moving forward, I mean, there we go. This is the home builder peak. Now, here's the thing. Sure, it's down. It's down. But we're not, you know, at my beautiful trend line there. We're not below where the kind of average was at, what, 25,000 yet. Okay? Boom, 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 boom. This is this here. If we dip down here, that little bit there, it has to be, it, it'll be this, hope, or maybe less than this bit here that was added to it. So this is the the you know peak up. Oh, I can do solid line. I can do wait. Did I just straight? Huh? Oh, shit! I'm learning. I'm learning stuff in one note every day. <laughs> oh boy! There you, there you go. There you go. So yeah. Anyway, sorry. I'm getting distracted. I'm playing with my new toys. This peak up here, we go back down, and hopefully the dip down isn't too bad. But right now we you know we've had a big fall, but we're still not at this level. Now look at these numbers of uh, detached houses. And now think about the, that 20 houses that the states are going to get every month thanks to the Housing Future Fund. So, my, oh, well, let's, let's have a talk about this, guys. The most encouraging thing for me is that Labor is trying to have a dialogue between the state, uh, the federal, state, and local level. Or, oh, it's only federal and state. They need to get the local level down as well. We need to have a holistic solution from top to bottom of our levels of government to address this housing issue. We need to demand changes to legislation to make it easier to build. We need to remove onerous requirements on housing, particularly all of the livability standards. We need to scale back the environmental requirements. I know people want to save the planet. What do you want? You want people living in tents or do you want people to be able to afford a house? That because that's what's happening here, and it's just going to get worse. It's just going to get worse. So you've got to make a decision. Maybe we just do it for twenty years. You make all uh, you really simplify the construction requirements. You know, remove all of the energy efficiency requirements. Get rid of those reports because that that's thousands of dollars you've got to add to each build. Make them optional if people want to choose them. Oh, there'll be a lot of people angry at those suggestions, but hey. I guess they're just happy for people to be living in tents, eh? Anyway, you tell me your thoughts and opinions on this one, guys. What solutions do you see to this scenario? Anyway, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. Check out HeiserBim or Heiser Does. At the moment, I'm playing with a lot of new tools and features on the software that I'm using. If you want to support us, you can on YouTube or Patreon. Use our referral links, buy our pocket squares, or call us if you need an architect. Take care. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.